Hi, my name is Netta Nikpour. I'm a cornea cataract and refractive surgeon in Honolulu, Hawaii. So one of the things that I am most excited about, which I think is, I don't know, maybe five to 10 years off, the more I talk to people, is a true accommodating IOL. There's lots of work being done on true accommodating IOLs. There's lots of different models, lots, lots of different ways to do it, but it seems like we're actually getting closer. And I think once we have an, an accommodating optic, all these other variations of IOLs that provide increased range of vision, but have some side effect profile are essentially going to go away. And we're going to have excellent quality of vision in an optic that just is a changing optic. The other really exciting thing that is to come with lenses is modular optics and modular IOLs. And so I think once we have a multi-component IOL that we can implant something in the capsular bag that will maintain the space, potentially eliminate PCO, and then have an exchangeable optic, then we'll be able to actually upgrade patient's lens technology as new technology becomes available because there is definitely some a little you know a little bit of resistance or a little bit of fear to committing for younger patients especially who have maybe a mild cataract or patients who are looking to do a refractive lens exchange there's always a question of how much am i bothered now do i want to just take the technology that we have now or should i wait a couple of years and you know, I think where we are now, a few years is probably not going to change anything, but five or 10 years may. And so if we have the ability to tell those patients, don't worry about it, you implant this lens now and then you can exchange it later, it'll be it'll be much more liberating for patients. And that's um, one of the things that really makes the Vizian ICL so appealing for patients is that they can implant this lens in their eye now. And then, you know, when they're over 40, hopefully we'll have the extended depth of focus version that's, you know, available in Europe. Hopefully that'll be available in the US and then those patients can exchange that or they can just, you know, fly to Europe and exchange it there. Um, so I think that reversibility, upgradability, that kind of thing is, is important to patients. And so if we get to a point that we can do that with cataract surgery, that'll be amazing. The third thing that I'm really excited about that's much more not so high in the sky, that's a little bit more realistic and soon, is the IC8 lens, and I think having a you know basically a pinhole optic will be um, will be really interesting for patients that have aberrated corneas, and may even provide great quality of vision and range of vision for virgin eyes also. So I'm excited to get it and eventually start using it. You know, first in post RK, post you know highly aberrated, post refractive eyes, scarred corneas, PKs, things like that. But then maybe you know once once we kind of see how it performs, adapt that and start using and in virgin eyes also. I did a global fellowship with Jeff Tabin at Stanford with the Himalayan Cataract Project. And that is the reason that I went into ophthalmology was specifically to work with the Himalayan Cataract Project because there is so much need in the developing world. And cataracts are actually the leading cause of global blindness. And depending on which paper you read and whose estimates you believe, it's anywhere from you know 13 to 20 million people are bilaterally blind from cataracts in the developing world. And the Himalayan Cataract Project and the other organizations have systems in place that make cataract surgery an option that is affordable and have systems in place that allow us to do cataract surgery for a material cost of $25 per patient. And so cataract surgery with manual skull incision can take as little as a minute and a half if you're just Haven or five to 10 minutes if you're an average surgeon. And we have programs in place where we support local partners and can do as many as a thousand cataract surgeries in a week for a very, very low cost. And the results are amazing. The outcomes are great. There's one study that the Pimlin Cataract Project did that found that 80% of patients saw 20, 40 or better on day one after cataract surgery. And so it is low cost, but it is high quality. And so, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind while we are all really excited, myself included, about advanced technology and all of the ways that we're improving upon cataract surgery in the US. I think it's important to keep in mind that there is still a global problem of blindness from cataracts in the developing world. So it's not just about, oh, what's the newest IOL that we can use? and and how can we make our 2020 patients see 2015? You know, like these are all things that I really care about. 
But the other side of that coin is we still have millions of people in the world that are blind and tens of millions of people that are visually impaired from cataracts in the developing world. And so as little as $25 can support curing blindness for one patient. And so that's something that I think is always on my mind and I think is people are aware of it, but raising awareness about that and, and doing whatever you can to support nonprofits like the Himalayan Cataract Project and, and support training and teaching and directly actually providing care in the developing world is something that I hope people remember and think of from time to time.